Welcome to the Killian Family Homestead. Take a walk with me. Let's see how the animals are doing. Thought I'd do a quick update. We have released the turkey poults, the five that we kept for ourselves as replacements. There's one, and these are two little chickens that my son uh, hatched at preschool this year that the teacher gave to us. <laughs> I don't even, they have a fifth toe. I can't remember the breed, but turkey poults are growing well. There's Eric the Red, he's doing well. Yep, that's the noise he makes. Here's the other three turkey poults. Let's go see the sheep. Here we go. This is our two year old here, two and a half year old actually. She's been, she has mothered uh, this one, and this one, and that one, and that one. And this is the other two year old here, and she has mothered this one, and uh, that one right there. Boy and a girl. She had triplets, two boys, one girl, and we've sold a number of them this year. And so this is our flock as it stands right now. You can tell that they've they've eaten down pretty well this side of it. They still have a number of days yet on the schedule to be out here, but you know sheep are just really well known for eating all the way to the dirt and then leaving other clumps, and that just drives me nuts. But that's the way sheep are. You can tell there's a more uniform, longer cut on this side because the sheep haven't been put into that. That's the genius behind these uh, electric netting fences to have rotational grazing where they graze on here for three weeks and they shift over there for three weeks and back and forth, giving the grass enough time to fully grow out. This year what we're going to do, and the ram will probably come in August so we can have babies earlier this next year, we're going to breed her her, like we always do, and then these two. So that's four total. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna breed the two ewes that we're keeping over this year uh, from this year's crop of lambs because I really, really like how well these two grew out not having lambed this spring. So give them a good year and a half to two years before their first lambing, and they just seem to grow out better. So that's what I'm gonna do. I need to get, see these green stakes right here that help keep the corners firm? That's my issue here. I need a, another green stake right there. As well as over here, you see the same sagging effect. You grab a green stake to reinforce that so that the, it looks, just looks cleaner that way. There's the beehives. Check out our bee videos there. Anyways, sheep are doing well. Birds are doing well. I've broken all of them from being too broody. Broody means they have a tendency to set on a clutch of eggs to try to hatch them out and when they do that they stop laying and we've had a little bit of a dry spell in egg production and that's because they were all so stinking broody. So I've got them all out of it and uh, now the, the nursery is empty because they've been put out to pasture so to speak, these poults. So as you can see here on this side of the pasture it is very green and healthy. You might ask yourself, what sort of fertilizer do I put on to this pasture? And the answer is absolutely none. That's the purpose of these guys. Intensive grazing means that you are making the animals convert everything that you're growing and utilizing their feces and urine as a source of nitrogen processing, putting it back into the ground. Then what I do is I take a mower after they're done and I mow it all evenly so that the grass comes back up and chokes out hopefully more and more of the weeds each cycle we do. So the weeds don't have all summer long to photosynthesize and spread and grow. And um, so that's, that's the key here. So you might wonder why is this so green? Well it's because of the way we're managing our pasture. Let's see if I can get any good fo footage without getting stung of forager bees coming in with pollen. This is the time of night where maybe the 8th to 10th run for the foragers and, they, and some should be coming back with pollen. We'll take a look here. I see yellow pollen coming in. There we go, get that. Just take a look with me for a second. 
hopefully I don't get stung. If you see me abruptly leave, that's because they know my scent and they consider me a threat. You see some of the bees are fanning, which means they stick their abdomens up in the air and secrete a pheromone that tells these particular bees that this is their hive. I just saw, oh there's one right there. You see on their pollen baskets, they're bringing in a nice yellow pollen, which I'm going to show you where it's coming from. Look how many bees are on the front of hive number two. Bowser. You see those yellow flowers out there plus the sunflowers that are over there? That's where that pollen's coming from. I'm very grateful to the neighbors for that. I have a lot of clover flowers. There's one bee right there that's that's going flower to flower, still working hard even though it should be going back to the hive and going to bed pretty soon. Doing its trick. It's amazing what you can do on a small piece of property and what you can enjoy. See ya.